Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the time set for jury selection to begin in State of Arizona versus Jody Arias, CR 2008-031021. Please stand to be sworn. You and each of you do solemnly swear that you will true answers make of all questions asked by court and counsel, touching upon your qualifications to serve as a trial juror in the case now on trial. So I'll help you guide. Thank you. Please be seated. We are now going to begin the jury selection process. You are going to be asked a number of questions. These questions are not intended to pry unnecessarily into your personal lives or affairs. It is necessary to ask you these questions to determine if you can sit as a fair and impartial juror in this case. When you came into the courtroom this morning, you were given a juror number. For purposes of jury selection, you will be identified by that number. This helps to protect your privacy. The court reporter is making a verbatim record of everything said during the jury selection process. It is important that we attribute your responses to you, so if I do not identify you by your juror number, please state it aloud before you answer any questions in the courtroom. I am going to be asking questions of the entire panel. If your answer is no, you need do nothing. If your answer is yes or you have some other information to provide, please raise your hand. I will call on you individually. If your response to a question would require you to give us information that you would prefer to provide privately, please let me know that you would like to speak privately and I will arrange a time for you to speak privately. If at any time you cannot see or hear something that you should be hearing or seeing, please raise your hand and let me know. If you need to take a break for any reason, please raise your hand and let me know. We expect that you will be here no more than an hour this morning. This jury selection process is several parts. This is the first part. I'm going to ask you some basic questions this morning. And if you are not excused, then we are going to ask you to go downstairs to the jury assembly room in a meeting room and answer a questionnaire. When you have completed the questionnaire, court staff will give you a sheet of paper that gives you a time to come back next week or the following week for small session questioning. All right, any questions about the procedure we are going to follow this morning? Any questions at all? This courtroom is a large courtroom. The acoustic, acoustics are sometimes challenging and it is difficult to hear. So for all of those juror panel members seated behind the bar in the back part of the courtroom, if you are going to speak, I'm going to ask that you stand up and use the microphone that the bailiffs will provide for you. Those of you seated in the front of the courtroom, we should be able to hear you, but if you have a very soft voice, please stand to respond. If you do not have a soft voice, then you can remain seated. All right, any questions? All right, I'm going to begin by introducing court staff to you. 
The bailiff for this division is Randy Collins. He's standing in the back, in the middle of the courtroom. The courtroom clerk is Kelly Schimmerhorn. She's seated to my left. Her job is to swear in jurors, witnesses, and take care of court-related paperwork. The court reporter for this division is Michael Babicki. He's seated in front of me. He's being assisted today by Danielle Cadena, C-A-D-E-N-A. The judicial assistant for this division is Janet Weibelhaus, and she may serve as a bailiff from time to time during the trial. My name is Sherry Stevens, and I'm the judge for this division. Do any of you know me or any member of the court staff? Do any of you know any of us? If so, please raise your hand. All right, I see a hand. Now, so that I identify you properly, I'm going to ask that you hold up your card with the number facing toward me. Number 36, who do you know? Hold on one the second. Mic the microphone isn't working. Uh, now try it. I work for Maricopa County with pretrial services, and from time to time I see your name come up. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? No, me or any member of court staff? I see number 21. Yes, who do you know? So, uh, no entiendo inglés ni hablo inglés. You do not speak English, sir? No. No English. Is there any objection? No. Council approach. Prior to um, Jury selection in the first trial, we filed a motion for the exclusion of uh, non English, English the arbiter, or well, automatic exclusion of non English speaking jurors. I understand that motion uh, was denied, but I stand by that objection as far as it relates to this juror. The objection was previously um, denied, and the policy of the court, for the record, has not changed. We do not have interpreters for jurors available. All right, so is there any objection to releasing number 21? None other than that if made it in the future, I will say something to the effect that absolutely. Okay. Our objection, no objection to this. I have no objection. Thank you. Juror 21, you are excused. You may leave. You may leave. Thank you. Does anyone else not speak English? Anyone else not speak English? So raise your hand. Anyone? See no other hands. All right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All right. I'm going to introduce this, the prosecutor. Prosecutor in this matter is Juan Martinez. Mr. Martinez is standing. Mr. Martinez is employed by the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. Do any of you know Mr. Martinez? Do any of you know Mr. Martinez? I see no hands. Would you please introduce the individual seated at council table with you? Good morning. Uh, assisting me or sitting with me throughout the trial will be initially will be Detective uh, Esteban Flores. He is with the Mesa Police Department. And also sitting at council table will be Robert Schatz. He's with the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. Do any of you know Detective Flores? I see no hands. Do any of you know Mr. Schatz? I see no hands. Thank you. you. May be seated. The defendant in this matter is represented by Kirk Nermy. Mr. Nermy, please stand. And Jennifer Wilmot. Ms. Wilmot is now standing. Please turn around so the juror panel can see you. Do any of you know Mr. Nermy? Do any of you know Mr. Nermy? So please raise your hand. I see no hands. Do any of you know Ms. Wilmot? I see no hands. Mr. Nermy, will you please introduce your client to the jury panel, please? Good morning, everyone. Today, uh, Ms. Beaumont and I are representing Ms. Jody Arias. Do any of you know Ms. Arias? All right, I see a hand. Please put your card up. 
So we can see number 82. How do you know Miss Arias? I don't know Jody personally, but uh, we are from the same hometown in California, and my one of my family members happened to be a good friend of hers uh, when they were growing up. All right. Is there anything about that association that causes you any concern about your ability to sit as a fair and impartial juror in this case? Well, I guess not. I mean, other than, like I said, they were good friends. Um, there's pictures of them together, of the family member and stuff, so I don't know if that's a problem for you guys. <laughs> well, no, the issue is whether or not you feel you can sit as a fair and impartial juror. Is that yes? Yes. Thank you. All right, who else knows Ms. Arias? Anyone else? Yeah. Number 11. Yes, sir. Have you watched the trial for TV? Okay. Thank you, sir. Is that your only knowledge of Ms. Arias? Yes. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? <coughs> I see no hands. Thank you. You may be seated. You may be seated. May introduce Ms. De La Rosa? Oh, yes. You may. Thank you. Uh, also assisting us throughout the trial will be uh, Maria De La Rosa, mitigation specialist, working for Ms. Arias as well. Do any of you know Ms. De La Rosa? I see no hands. Thank you. You may now be seated. All right. This case has received extensive media coverage. Have any of you read, seen, or heard anything about this case in the media? All right, I see many, many numbers. All right, you may put your cards down, thank you. If you are selected as a juror in, for this case, you will be told that you can only consider the evidence, that is the testimony of witnesses, and the exhibits admitted in trial, and the law that is given to you in the written jury instructions in reaching a verdict. Is there anyone who would be unable to follow this instruction? Is there anyone who would be unable to follow the instruction that you may only consider the evidence that you hear in this courtroom? All right, number 70. Yes, sir, you couldn't follow that rule? No, ma'am. All right, and is that because of what you've seen? That's correct. Heard. All right, thank you, sir. Anyone else feel that way? Number 11, and is that because of what you read, saw, and heard in the media? So you, okay, thank you. Number 44, so you feel that you could not follow the instruction to only consider the evidence you hear in this courtroom? Thank you. Number 63? I don't think I can erase it from my mind. Just the microphone, thank you. I've, I've seen and heard so much about it, I don't think I could erase that from my mind. Thank you. Number 13. Yeah, I don't think I could. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear Number you. 13, you said you cannot. I don't think I would be able to forget what I've seen. All right. And who else? Number 24. I have problem understanding, hearing. You have trouble hearing? Yes. Thank you for letting us know, Randy. We need some uh, earphones for juror number 24, please. <clears throat> number 17. I don't think that I could put out of my mind all the things that I've heard about this trial prior to this. All right, thank you. Anyone else in the jury box feel that way? All right, in the back, anyone else? Number 37. I followed the case pretty closely last year. All right, and so, sir. Do you feel that you would be unable to follow the court's instruction to consider only the evidence you hear in this courtroom? You do not believe you could. Thank you very much. Number 46. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? 57. All right, thank you. And anyone else in the back? We've got number six down here. All right, thank you, sir. Number 55? Uh, yes, ma'am. I, 
I don't believe I could change my mind on what I think should be the uh, final verdict. All right, so you believe that you could not listen to the evidence that you hear in this courtroom and decide the case only on that evidence? Okay, thank you, sir. Number 86. I saw a lot of the case in the media last year, and I don't think I could be impartial in this case. Thank you, sir. Number 85. I also followed the case. I don't think I could be impartial towards this case. Okay, thank you. Number 75. I watched too much of the case, and I don't think I could be impartial. Thank you very much. Number 80. I watched the case extensively. I don't feel like I can be impartial at, at this point. Thank you very much. Number 90. I won't be able to be impartial, Your, Your Honor. So in terms of when you say impartial, that means that you couldn't follow the state's, I mean, sorry, the court's instruction to consider only the evidence that you hear in the courtroom. Is that correct? Correct. My mind's made up. Thank you. Number 97. I also believe I would not be able to be impartial to this case. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Anyone else? Now, number 94. I don't think I would be able to be impartial. I've seen too much. All right. So you also cut, watch the media reports about this. Is that correct, sir? Yes. All right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone else who could not set aside what you have read, seen, or heard in the media about this case and decide this case only on the evidence you hear in this courtroom? Number seven. I watched too much in the news and watched too much on the internet to be impartial. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'm going to turn on some white noise so that I can speak privately with the attorneys. The court reporter will be taking down our conversation. If you're talking among yourselves, then he cannot hear and make a record. So I'm going to ask that you sit quietly and wait for us. We will be with you shortly. Counsel, please approach. Objection to excusing jurors 70, 11, 44, 44, 63, 13, 17, 37, 46, 46, 57, 6, 55, 86, 85, 75, 80, 90, 97, 94, and 7. 7? That was 70. 70 was the first one. Yeah. Any objection? No. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'm going to be excusing some of you from further participation in the jury selection process for this case. Please remain seated while I call the members of the jurors who will be excused. I will let you know when it is the appropriate time for you to leave the courtroom. The following jurors are being excused at this time. Number 70, 11, 44, 63, 13, 17, 37, 46, 57, 6, 55, 86, 85, 75, 80, 90, 97, 94, and 7. Thank you for being here and participating. Please exit out the back and give your juror card number to the bailiff as you leave. You do not need to report back to the jury commissioner's office.
Juror number 96. Yes, do you speak English? All right, just one moment, one moment. I speak English, but I don't understand hundred percent English. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. If you could put the microphone up a little closer. I said I speak English, but I don't understand hundred percent English. We still don't know what you're saying. Um, why don't you come out a little bit into the? Thank you. All right, walk forward just a little bit, please. Thank you. All right, now tell us again. I speak English, but I don't understand hundred percent everything. So you have difficulty. You speak some English, but you're yes, not fluent I, I speak in English. English, but I don't understand everything. You know, hundred hundred percent. Okay, I see. Thank you, Council. Please approach. Objection. No. Preserve our prior objection, but okay. beyond that, no. Okay. Juror 96, you are also excused. Thank you for being here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this jury will not be sequestered. What does that mean? Sequester means that you will not be required to leave your homes and live in a hotel while this trial is going on, right? Sequestering juries happens in some states. It, it has not happened in Arizona since the 70s. There are many reasons for that. One of the most important reasons why we do not sequester juries is because we have learned that if we sequester jur juries, otherwise qualified jurors are not willing to leave their homes and friends for that period of time. So, because this case has received substantial media attention, the burden on you, if you are a juror, is going to be greater than on a typical jury. Specifically, what we are going to ask you to do is to monitor yourselves and to monitor your contact with media. For example, if you typically read the newspaper, we're going to ask that you bring in your newspaper or other periodicals into the, court, into the uh, courthouse each day and the bailiff will review your newspaper and remove any articles about the trial. If you typically watch news in the evening or in the morning, we're going to ask that you not watch the news while this trial is in process. If you typically watch television programs at night, we're going to ask that you record those programs and fast forward through the commercials so that you will avoid any exposure to any media that may be in commercials and otherwise. I understand that's a burden, but it is important that if you are selected as a juror on this case that you only consider the evidence that you hear in this courtroom and that you not be exposed to any media reports about this case. Is there anyone who would be unable or unwilling to monitor your exposure to the media? Anyone who would not be willing to do that while sitting on a jury, on this jury? All right, number 72. Yes, sir, tell us about that. I'm a private investigator, and therefore I watch the news to watch what's going on in the surrounding counties to make sure it's not going to affect my work. All right, and so it would be difficult for you to avoid media coverage. Yes, I also use social media to do my job as well. So okay. this would be a problem. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else feel that way? Number 56. Where I work, there are televisions in common areas. Uh, they typically have news channels on. I don't have much control over that. So it would be difficult for you to avoid media coverage of the trial. Is that what you're saying, sir? Thank you. Anyone else? Number 49. I would have the same problem that this gentleman behind me had with uh, public TV on. And my husband is a news junkie, so that's always on too. 
<laughs> Thank you. All right, anyone else? If you are selected to sit on this jury, you will be given an admonition. What that admonition will tell you is that you cannot do any research about this case, and you cannot talk to anyone about the case, or allow anyone to talk to you about the case while you are on the jury. That means that you cannot talk with your friends, family, coworkers about this case, and you cannot allow them to talk to you about this case. Is there anyone who would have difficulty following the court's order regarding talking about the case and researching the case? Anyone who couldn't do that? Number 31. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm kind of in a unique situation. I work for the Scottsdale Fire Department. I'm their operations chief and their public information officer. The media calls me every day for stuff of what's going on in the fire department, and then when I get to the station, all those guys are going to start talking about this case, and it's going to be hard for me not to talk about it because they will make me go back to shift work after I'm done serving as a jury. Just okay. wanted to throw that out there. Appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Anyone else have difficulty following the court's order with regard to talking about the case and researching the case? Number 53. Yes, sir. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, my wife uh, is constantly looking at this particular case. She had it on uh, during uh, the trial, and uh, you know, I'd have to make her turn off the TV, I think, because she was pretty stuck to it. Thank you. All right, so you believe because of that that it would be difficult for you to avoid talking to your wife about this case? Okay, thank you, sir. Anyone else? Along that same topic, or on that same topic, social media. How many of you have social media accounts, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, instant messaging, some other? All right, most of you do. Another order from the court would be that you not communicate by social media about this case while you're on this jury. And that may very well mean that you have no interactions on social media while, while you are on this jury. Is there anyone who would be unwilling to do that? Anyone who would be unwilling to do that? Number 84. Uh, was it, I'm sorry. Was that just for uh, being on social media at all? Well, I guess we would need to hear more specific information from you, and you can certainly provide that in the jury questionnaire. But in general, avoid any social media communication about this case. If I have Excuse me. I have to handle social media interaction uh, for my business daily. All right. If it was not, if it was only related to your business and not this case, would, would it be difficult for you? Mm -hmm. no. So you could follow the court's order. Yes, I could. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have difficulty with the concept of social media, avoiding social media about this case? Any? At this point, I will. I will also tell you that I know. It's not a perfect world, and you may have inadvertent contact with a case of a media contact about this case. And if that happens, all we ask you to do is to let the bailiff know immediately. So if you should see something or hear something or read something, just let the bailiff know. All right? All right, let's talk about the trial schedule. Do we have the calendars? Have you already passed them out? Everybody has the calendar. The parties expect this case through December 21st. That is an estimate. There are many things that occur during a trial, and as a result of that, the case may be shorter or it may be longer than that. But we are giving you our best estimate at this time, which is December 21st. If you are selected as a juror, you would need to be here on the dates indicated on the calendar. Typically, that is Monday through Thursday each week from 9.30 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. There will be a lunch break each day, 
and recesses in the morning and in the afternoon for about 15 minutes. There will be no trial on Friday. Now with this schedule in mind, is there anyone who could not sit as a juror because of the schedule? And before I hear from you about that aspect, I will advise you that the law provides that a juror may be excused only if his or her absence from work would tend to materially or adversely affect the public health, safety, welfare, or interest, or if service as a juror would impose an undue hardship on that juror. That is the standard I will be applying to your request to be excused because of the trial schedule. All right, we're going to start over here with folks seated in the jury box, and if you have a conflict with the schedule, I'm going to ask that you tell me the reason that you are unavailable. All right, anyone on the first row? I see no cards. Second row, oh, yes, number one. Uh, my only conflict would be if I work full time. Okay. This seems like an appropriate time to explain the long-term jury fund. In Arizona, we have the long-term jury fund. What that does is it will reimburse you for any wages you miss because of your service as a juror, up to $300 per day. All right? It's for long-term juries, and this jury qualifies. If your employer pays you for jury service, then you are not eligible for payment through the long-term jury fund. Payment through the long-term jury fund is available even if you are self-employed or you work on commission. If you have any questions about how the long-term jury fund may apply to you, I'm going to ask that you speak to the jury commissioner downstairs after we finish here this morning. The jury commissioner can explain to you specifically how the fund will apply to your situation. But in general, it will reimburse you up to $300 per day for wages you would have earned, but for your jury service. All right? So does that take care of your concern, juror number one? All right. Second row, number 12. So I'm self-employed. Yes. Uh, and it's not so much about the money that I'd be losing, but I'm accountable for numbers. I represent about seven different companies, and I'm accountable for numbers for those companies that wouldn't be generated if I'm not on the road covering the two states that I cover. So it would definitely be a, a financial hardship and probably long-term kind of damage to my business. Are you asking to be asking to be excused for that reason? I am. Thank you. Number 14. I work for the state of Arizona facilitating contracts and adult and aging services. So I'm thinking it would impact some of the people that in the state that get services if, if I wasn't there. It would be hard for long term for them to have somebody cover me. What I'm going to ask you to do is to speak to your supervisor and find out what could be done uh, to, to provide a substitute for you if you are selected as a juror. And then you can report back to us when you return next week. In, in doing that, would I have to tell them, I mean, just say a long-term jury? What you're allowed to say is that you are being considered for a jury that will last through December 21. Okay. All right. That's all you can tell them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Number 15. Um, I run a, a, a daycare, and um, I'm a, the sole director. All right, so there's no one to do your job if you don't do it. Is that what you're telling me? I'm sorry. There's no one to do your job if you are not there to do it. Is that correct? I have an assistant, but... So you have an assistant. Yeah, I'll just, just state regulations that I am supposed to be on the premises. So you believe it would call, be... I can call them and ask. All right. Well, why don't you do that, and then you can report back to us at a later time. All right, thank you. Anyone else in the second row? Number nine. I know this is ridiculous, but we have two family vacations that are scheduled. That is not ridiculous. Those are the exact kinds of things that I need to hear. Are the plans already made? Yes, uh, reservations, airline tickets, everything's scheduled. And those vacations are scheduled during times when we are supposed to be in trial. Is yes. that correct? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else in the second row? Let's move to the third row, number 25. Um, I'm 
a full-time student at ASU on a full academic scholarship, and I don't believe that I could keep up the GPA needed if I was here on trial every day. Thank you. All right, number 23. I'm sorry, one more time. I have a couple of reasons. One, I'm currently nursing, and I'm required to extract milk at certain times a day, so I don't know if that would be possible. Um, and I've also currently left my job and a stay-at-home mom and full-time student. I don't know if I could keep up my coursework as well. Um, and then I would also have a problem with child care arrangements. Thank you. Number 22. My job requires me to travel to, uh, I oversee sales for 14 hotels in Central and West Texas. So I travel 90% of the time. And I do have travel already scheduled <coughs> for the next two months. I have a hotel. I have, I, I'm already going to San Antonio, Austin and San Antonio next week. And I have a hotel opening in Odessa on October 16th and a hotel opening outside of San Antonio in November, which requires my presence. Thank you. Number 20. I have a special needs child that has pre-scheduled appointments twice a week. You need to be present for these appointments? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else on the number four? So October 9 through 15, you have a vacation. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. And you are, I'm sorry, your jury number again was four? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, anyone else in the jury box? Number 10. Um, I have a work conference. Um, I'm the only one who responsible for that area who can go and that's eight, December 8th through the 10th. One more time, the dates are December? December 8th through 10th. Mm -hmm. Number 11. Number 11. Thank you. Anyone else in the jury box? Well, let's move to the back of the courtroom. All right, number 30. I am a pediatric occupational therapist, and I am legally obligated to provide services to the children. I cover five schools and 56 kids, and if I'm not there, they do not hire a sub. Thank you. Number 31. Sorry, you have to hear from me again, Your Honor. Um, like I said, I'm Wisconsin Health Fire. I'm their uh, operations chief. I, every Monday I have a regional working group Super Bowl meeting, that's very important that we meet every week for that. And then also uh, the waste management, I am the operations chief for that, and we have that every other week. And this would really put a hinder on some of that uh, safety stuff we're looking at, and uh, EMS for the citizens. All right, thank you. And number 32. I am also a full-time student at ASU with an academic scholarship. Thank you. Number 33. I'm an independent contractor for uh, FedEx, and I don't get paid if I don't work, and I don't have anybody to replace me if, I, if I'm not there. So it would be a hardship for you, sir, to serve on this jury? Thank you. All right, number 39. Yeah, I'm a Vietnam veteran, and I have a tomorrow a VA appointment to go over my diabetes and my neuropathy treatment at the VA. And then I also have a October 2nd appointment with a private physician to go over my, um, check my feet. And then every four weeks I go in for eyeball shots in my right eye to prevent me from having total loss of vision in that eye. That's all I got. Those, those weekly appointments that you have, on what day? Can you schedule those on a Friday? Uh, where I, I'm sorry, where I go for the eyeball injections, uh, he's only in his office on Tuesdays, Tuesday afternoons. And that is every week, sir, is that correct? Pardon me? That's every week that you have to? Every four weeks. Oh, every four, yeah, weeks. four weeks. I go in for the uh, injection. And basically what it does, it prevents my uh, vision uh, from losing my vision. All right. Are those your only conflicts at this time? Yes. Thank you. All right, number 40. I have a scheduled annual leave from October, October 18th. I'm sorry, sir. I have scheduled annual leave from October 18th to October 25th, and I can't get out of it at this moment. 
All right, thank you. 41. I'm scheduled for a training seminar October 23rd through October 26th. What time would you, is it all day on October 23rd? It starts at 8 o'clock, ends at 6 o'clock. Thank you. 49. I'm the only person in my job that can do the job. It would uh, affect 50 people. It's uh, payroll and things like that. Thank you. 48. I have a vacation scheduled for the, uh, the 12th through the 15th. And um, in my office there are three employees and I'm one of them. So I think it would be a very uh, detrimental to, my, to the business. Thank you, sir. Down here, number 27. I have a licensing, license training from October 14th through the 24th, which does impact my job. Thank you. Number 36. I have a doctor's appointment October 6th. I could make it in after that. Okay. That's your only conflict? Conflict. Thank you. Number 52. I have a flight to New York the last week of October. I'm visiting my mom who had, she had heart surgery the last week of August. And that was the first week I could fit into my schedule to go see her. So looking at the calendar, would you be gone on the days that are indicated? We will be in trial the 27th, 28th, and 30th. Scheduled the 26th through the, um, I, I believe it's November 2nd. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks. 53. Good morning. Uh, the company that I work for is publicly traded. Our quarter end is September 30th. Uh, we'll have an earnings release somewhere near the end of October, beginning of November. The date hasn't been set yet. Uh, but a lot of the processes that I go through as part of the quarter end process are, you know, they're multi week processes. Uh, and I'm the only one that does that in the function. And then I do have a scheduled vacation beginning on December 20th through December 28th. All right, so let me just ask this. With regard to your job and your obligations at your job, would you need to be available the last two weeks of October yes. for, for that? Yes, I would. All right, thank you. 43. <laughs> I have a work trip that's already planned for the week of the 13th through the 17th. And I'm concerned about uh, potential financial hardship for the long term. I'm the only uh, person in my family that has income. And my husband has a critical illness and our medical expenses are over $2,000 a month. So the $300 a day wouldn't cover what I normally make. And I wouldn't have enough uh, funds to be able to cover my normal job. Um, unless I was able to do that like over the weekends, which is something I could certainly discuss with my supervisor. All right, why don't you do that and then you can report back to us. All right, thank you. 42. Your Honor, I have uh, four business trips to the East Coast scheduled uh, between October and the end of December. Uh, they typically take place the first or second week of the month, and then there's another one later in November. Uh, I'm an attorney, so I work on a billable hour basis, and I have other people that I supervise. Thank you. Number 50. Yes, Your Honor. I work in fraud protection and treasury services. I'm the only employee in that area in the state of Arizona for my bank. So it would be a hardship for you and or your employer? I just don't have a replacement. The only other people in my department are in Kansas City and St. Louis. I'm the only treasury employee in the state of Arizona, and I watch the fraud protection for all of my commercial clients in Arizona, so it would be hard for them to get a a replacement for that. All right. Thank you, sir. 51. Um, I have a vacation next week um, already scheduled. And then for the week of Thanksgiving, we'll be gone all of that week as well. Um, so that would be November 24, 25, 26, and 27. Is that Yes. Correct? And we actually have the flights for Denver 
already scheduled. Thank you. 54. Your Honor, I own a small company. Uh, it's a consulting firm, uh, engineering, and I am the uh, president. And by law, I have to be there to supervise the work. Uh, so it would be a hardship for me to be gone for a long time. Thank you, sir. 59. I am the owner of a business, and um, I have 27 employees. Additionally, I'll be traveling from the 12th to the 16th of November. That's a, November 15 and 16? November 16. Oh, the 12th. Thank you. All right, 62. Hi. I'll be in town, but I have company coming in the week of the 18th through 25th of October. It's an elderly mother that I don't feel like I can leave alone for that time. Other than that, I'm good. Are you saying that you are unavailable? I'm unavailable that week. I don't feel like I can leave her alone. She's and not healthy enough to be left alone. There is no one else who... No, it's just my husband and I that live out here. She's coming to visit. All right. Thank She's you. having some assistance to come out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 65? I'm a mail carrier, and I only get paid for when I show up. And I also babysit my grandson on Thursdays of every week for my daughter. So I believe it would be a hardship on me. All right. So there's no one who can watch your granddaughter, is that correct? Grandson. Grandson. Thank you. I'm not really sure. <laughs> well, are you asking to be excused for those two reasons? No. The reason is um, being paid. That would be my hardship. Not because I can't find a babysitter for her. All right. Did you... Hear my explanation about the long-term jury fund. I don't, I, would, I don't, I'm not permanent with the USPS. I'm only like an on-call, so I didn't know if that would apply to me. I'm going to ask that you speak to the jury commissioner downstairs about that, and then you can report back what they tell you. Okay. So your only concern then would be being paid for your work for USPS. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Thank correct. you. Thank you. All right, anyone else on this side? Number 56. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I have some uh, required work that needs to be done between now and November 15th. If a replacement cannot be found, that would be a hardship for my employer. I'd need time to coordinate that. What do you do? I'm a senior Linux engineer, IT. Are you asking to be excused, or do you believe there's a possibility your employer could find a substitute for you? It's possible my employer could find a substitute. I would need to talk to them. All right, so I'm going to ask that you speak with your employer, and you can report back to us next week. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, let's move over to this side. Number 73. Yes, Your Honor, um, I'm the sole provider for my family, and... I work on a commission-based salary. That's it. Well, you would still qualify to receive payment through the long-term jury fund. Would that address your concern? Uh, no, I don't. It, my salary varies from, you know, I, I don't know if I could provide for my family on three hundred dollars, you know, a day. So. Are you asking to be excused, or do you want to pursue the issue with the jury commissioner? I mean, I can talk to them and see what right. they say. So why don't you do that, and then you can report back. Thank you. 74. I have a pre-planned vacation from November 12th uh, to November 18th. Thank you, sir. 76. I have a conference in Southern California that I will be out of town from the 15th through the 17th of October and a special event that I'm responsible for on the 30th of October. All right. The first conflict, the 15th through the 17th, isn't an issue, but October 30th, you would need to be somewhere else on October 30th. Is that correct? For the entire day? It, it's a luncheon event, so it's like most of 
the day. It's from like set up in the morning till early afternoon conclusion. And you need to be there for that event, is that correct? It was kind of my idea. I feel like I kind of need to be there, yes. Thank you. Number 98. 98. Uh, Your Honor, I'm, am, um, I'm available most of the time. However, I do have a biopsy scheduled tomorrow for a medical procedure. And if that goes fine, then no problem. If it doesn't go fine, then I have to have additional surgery, maybe at a later date. Uh, I just don't know. All right, tomorrow's not going to be an issue, so you can right. just let us know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Number 78. Um, I'm a full-time uh, worker and a student, but I most recently got arrested for a DUI on Saturday morning, and I think I might have a work leave, but I'm not sure how, yeah, I'm not really sure how that's going to work out. All right, so you are a student. Will your class schedule interfere with the trial schedule? I have classes that, that start at 5, and... It might interfere a little bit, containing that if the jury gets out at 5, it might be late for my first class. So, Where is your class? Where is your uh, school? GCC, North. Thank you. Number 93. Hi, I work for the State of Arizona, uh, the Department of Child Safety. Um, I just didn't know this was going to be as long. I would just like to get permission from my uh, supervisor that the state does allow this time off. And I do believe that the 300 days, as long as you, that's up to that, I think that would be okay. But I just want to make sure of that as well. All right. And I would recommend that you speak with the jury commissioner also to verify what you will receive with the long-term jury fund. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 72. Is your card up? Yes. As previously stated, as a private investigator, I'm solely based my income, rather, is solely based on commission work. I am the manager of one company. I work for four others. Um, I oversee several employees in my company. Uh, there is no one that can replace me as the owner of the company I manage is out of state permanently. So there's no one to oversee them working. It would cause not only financial hardship to myself, but also to the owner of that company. Thank you. All right, number 84. Uh, Your Honor, um, I am a, a sole uh, proprietor and uh, the only person uh, in my job who can do it. And I'm under contract to deliver work weekly. Um, and I'm afraid if uh, a trial this long, I wouldn't be able to deliver my work uh, for that period of time. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? 68. Hi, I'm a school administrator, and we have fall break next week, and I'll be off with my girls during that time, so I had some things planned. I also am attending a bullying uh, prevention conference on October 16th and 17th. However, I do think I can get a replacement for that. I also have a conference on December 1st. I'd have to ask my employer if I could get a substitute in that position. Okay, thank you. I see no other hands. All right, counsel, please approach. All right. 72. A private investigator needs to use social media. Any objection? Fifty-six has TVs in his common areas at work. Any objection? No. Forty-nine also has a um, husband who's a news junkie and has public TVs at work. Any objection? No. No objection. Thirty-one, Scottsdale Fire Department. Any objection? No. Fifty-three also is indicating has would be unable to follow the court's order regarding media. And also he has a vacation plan, so there's two reasons that right. he's. Any objection? No. No. Right, number 12, uh, financial hardship <coughs> because of his job. Any objection? No. Number nine has two family vacations. Any objection? Number nine. Nine. 
Mm-hmm. Number 25 is a full-time student at ASU. Any objection? No. 23 is a nursing mother. Any objection? Sorry, Judge, I can't hear. Number 23 is a nursing mother. Any objection? No objection. Number 22 travels to Texas for work. Any objection? No. no. Number 20 has a special needs child. Any objection? No, no. Number 10 is going to be gone December 8 through 10. Any objection? No. Number 30 is a PD. Pardon? Four. Are you missing? Yeah. Which one? No. Number, what did you say I missed? Well, I don't know what you mean. I don't know. Well, okay, number four. Any objection? No. No. Okay. Number 30 is a pediatric therapist. Yes, we just did number 10, December 8 through 10. It's going to be gone. Any objection? No, I thought we just did number four. We did four and we did 10. We did 10 and then we did four. Okay. Number 30 is pediatric therapist. Any objection? No objection. Number 32, full-time student, any objection? No. 33 works as an independent contractor for FedEx, any objection? No. Okay, yeah. if you need to talk, raise your hand so I can give you the microphone because Mike can't hear. All right, number 40 is going to be gone October 15 through 25, any objection? 40, 40, no. 49, payroll clerk, can't be gone from work, any objection? Number 48, vacation October 12 through 15, any objection? No. 27, has a licensing class October 14 through 24, any objection? No objection. 52 is going to be in New York starting on the 26th, any objection? No objection. Number 53 has a vacation and, no, actually, never mind. Yes, yeah. Number 42 is an attorney, and he's going to be out three trips between October and December. Any objection? No objection. Number 50, uh, fraud protection. Number 50, any objection? Number 51 is going to be gone Thanksgiving week. Any objection? Number 54 has a consulting firm and must supervise the work at his job. Any objection? No, no objection. 59 owns his own business, has 27 employees. He's going to be gone November 12 through 16. Any objection? No. Number 62 has an elderly mother visiting October 18 through 25. Any objection? No objection. And that should be it, I think. On that page 74 has a vacation November 12 through 18. Any objection? 74. No 76 is got a luncheon on October 30th. Any objection? I will, I will object. I don't know that there's a basis for one day for some some luncheon, so I would object at this point. I don't see any reason to keep them. I mean, what we're trying to do is keep them in the county. Take away if we take away day, and now we're trying to extend the trial. So I would object just for the sake of the economy of the case. Okay, I'm going to excuse number 76. Number 78 is a student at Glendale Community College. Any objection? Mm -hmm. 84 is a sole provider and is under contract to provide weekly work. Any objection? No objection. Right. Anyone else at this point? I would uh, would ask that juror number 98 be excused. We could have issues down the road. We don't know what the extent is or when we're going to have notice on the biopsy results. Okay. So you don't object to excusing her? Okay. Great. Anyone else? I think she was going to check with Right, that's correct. Right. Um, let's see here. The other thing with number 68, though, she did. 
she said that she was going to be off next week for fall break. So she was going to check with her school, but she was still taking next week off. Yep, that's not a problem because we're going to need jury selection. We can move her to the following week of our small group. Um, I guess the other one would be 41. So they had training on 1023. That was all day. I don't know if that's a Friday or what the other week that falls under. May 13th, 26th. 41? We did 41. No, 43 said 13th through 17th is the number of the no, dates. 40, I have 41. I have oh, 40. 41. We did 41. Yeah, she's gone. 41's okay. gone. Uh, 39. Well, I, we can definitely work around his currently scheduled appointments, and we'll have to work around his appointment every four weeks on Tuesday. And I think that's something that we could do. Okay. Okay. So, any objection then? No. Okay. Thirty-nine. Wait, anyone else? Let's see. Seventy-two was already dealt with in the media issue. Mm -hmm. Correct. I believe that's it. Um, I would ask that number 15 be, I would ask that number 15 be excused. She's the lady that runs the daycare center, and she does have an assistant, but she's required by state law to be there. I just don't want to mess with the daycare center. I think that we have enough people that we can get, and those type of positions where we deal with kids, I don't want to substitute pain in there and hit a number. Not that anybody would, but I just, I just worry about that. She did, but if you want to stipulate, mm -hmm. I'll let her go now. Okay, and we'll let her report back. Yeah, one more. Number 73, he's the guy that only works on commission, and he's a sole provider. And uh, he says some days he gets a lot, some days he doesn't get a lot. There's no way that anybody can actually adequately compensate him. I don't care if he talks to whoever he talks to. He, it's not that I feel sorry for him. I just don't think he'll be adequately compensated. I agree. He seemed to re resent the idea of the three hundred dollars a day as compensation. Okay. So, are you stipulating some degree? Yes, sir. Okay. The other one is the mail carrier number sixty-five. She indicated that, that she's on an on-call basis, and so she's if she's on an on-call basis, she's not going to get any money from the commissioner because she can't show that she was supposed to work. And uh, I don't want anybody who might be resentful sitting there. Okay. My recollection was that she was going to check and see if that was a viable option for her. So I, I, I would object to exclusion at this time. All right. Well, well I, I think that Mr. Martinez is correct. They probably won't compensate her, but we'll let them tell her that and see where she is after that. Okay. That's okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be excusing more of you from the jury selection process. The following jurors excused. Again, please remain seated until I've called the number of all jurors to be excused. 72, 56, 49, 31, 53, 4, 12, 9, 25, 23, 22, 20, 10, 30, 32, 33, 39, 40, 41, 49, 48, 27, 52, 42, 50, 51, 54, 59, 62, 73, 74, 76, 98, 78, 84. Thank you all for being here today and participating in this process. You are excused.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are still with us, at this time I'm going to ask that you go downstairs to complete a juror questionnaire. It is a lengthy questionnaire and it may take you some time to complete it. There are three pages of instructions. I'm going to ask that you read those very carefully before you begin to complete the questionnaire. When you have completed the questionnaire, then you will provide it to court staff and they will give you a piece of paper that indicates when you need to return. So you will come back here either next week or the week after at a designated time for additional questions. Between now and then, you must follow the admonition. On the piece of paper that you get from court staff giving you the date when you are to return, at the bottom there is a written admonition. I'm going to read that admonition to you now, and it applies to you now. So from this point forward, you must follow the admonition. As a member of the sworn jury panel, you have the duty and obligation to follow this most important court order. Do not communicate with or provide any information to anyone by any means about this case. You may not use any electronic device or media, such as a telephone, cell phone, smartphone, iPhone, Blackberry, or computer, the internet, any internet service, or any text or instant messaging service, or any internet chat room, blog, or website, such as Facebook, MySpace, LinkedIn, YouTube, or Twitter, to communicate to anyone any information about this case or to conduct any research about this case until you have been excused as a potential juror. While you can tell others you are on a jury panel and what the schedule is, you cannot discuss anything about the case or your juror questionnaire. All right, so that is the court's order. It is very important that you follow that order. It is very important that you avoid any media information about this case. I'm going to ask that you do what I suggested, and that is begin recording your television programs. Do not watch the news. Do not read any newspaper or other periodical. All right, are there any questions at this point? Yes, sir, in your number, please. Number 35, yes, sir. Uh, I'm just I'm sure, you know, being a family man or being married, my partner is going to ask me you know, who or what. And, sir, what you have to. You can't say anything about the case. So you can say, I'm on a jury panel. The law prohibits me from discussing anything about the case. I can't tell you anything. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? I appreciate you clarifying that. Anyone else? All right. You are going to use a juror number you were given from this point forward. So memorize that number. You can give your card to the bailiff as you leave, and you will go downstairs to begin completing the jury questionnaire form. Thank you all for being here and participating. Thank you. I'm sorry. We'll have to do it on the record. So why don't you have a seat right there in the front, and and we'll and I'll ask you right now. I don't know. I'm gonna have to find out. I just have a question. All right. Why don't you ask the bailiff, and if he can't answer your question, we'll go on the record. All right, we'll take a recess. You can take a break for a few minutes before the next group comes upstairs. <laughs>